I have some really neat news. I have some really neat news. Mark Berman. Haven't had him on in a while. He writes for Roanoke.com, Roanoke Times Dispatch, covers Virginia Tech. He's going to join us in a half hour, talk a little bit about that Virginia Tech victory over the North Carolina Tar Heels. I've been wanting to do that. Uh, incorporate a little bit more Virginia Tech and... Here's the thing. I know our signal gets into North Carolina. And I've somewhat theorized, hmm, should we talk more about the North Carolina Tar Heels because of that? But this is what I know. And that is, first of all, and, you know, Appalachian State is right here too, so you've got to consider that. But even more than that, it's that you've got to remember, I am a former North Carolinian. And I lived in western North Carolina. Now, not right on the Tennessee border. Talking about Transylvania County. Sliding Rock. Brevard. Where I live. Mailing address Pisgah Forest. Little River, the actual, I guess, village name, population, what, 150 uh, do we have any store? We had a country inn down at the head, down at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a couple of uh, oh, gas station, small groceries that I don't know if they really made it. So you had to drive ten miles into town to deliver your garbage. You know that was kind of an interesting uh, thing going out there. There was uh, about five miles, uh, now that I remember, a convenience store that was somewhat modern, and there was a kind of, of a uh, old country, uh, you know, opening up at 10, closing at 4 type of place uh, around where the churches and the volunteer fire depot was. Took an hour to get to school on school bus. I wasn't a big fan of that, but you see, my grandparents, they wanted to retire into the country and all that. Why am I telling you this? Because that environment has got to be very similar to the areas of North Carolina that we get into. And if you are listening in here on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities, we are very appreciative, especially if you're coming from the Tar Heel State. But the thing is, I know the dichotomy of the sports fans in North Carolina. All the white collar people, they root for the Tar Heels. All the blue collar people, they root for NC State. You know, come to think of it, that's kind of gonna be like what the Super Bowl is gonna be. You know, all the white collar Bostonians. Not that there isn't a main line, or for that matter, you know, scruffy neighborhoods in Boston. There certainly are, but you don't really think of that with Boston. You know, you start to think of, you know, nose in the air, and hey, why is Eustace Tilly from Manhattan, and all that. That's what you think of. When you think of Philly, you think of the Palooka, who punches you in the face. I've got a great story I've got to tell, because I've got a little bit of Philly cred to myself because I actually did live in many of my formative years in the main line, which by the way is very white collar, but we were, my mother, I've talked about this, she has a PhD from Bryn Mawr. And, I mean, she went to Bryn Mawr and I was a little boy and we went to elementary school in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, okay, first and second grade. And, uh, and you know, you hear things about Philly I've got tales to tell you about just second grade. If you can possibly imagine, I, I, I need to hold it for tomorrow for the monologue. I really do. I'm thinking here, how am I going to, you know, where are we going to talk about this next hour? But with the Super Bowl, just what it's like to be in Philly or to grow up there and how indoctrinated you are to sort of that hard edge, not sort of that hard edge, by the way, the hard edge that you get. And I will show you even the second graders who had a hard edge at uh, the now since closed, I guess, since I was there, 
uh, Bryn Mawr Elementary School, which hasn't been around in quite some time. Uh, a couple of interesting, I mentioned this, I guess it's no secret, officially Pat Shermer yesterday hired as Giants head coach. The Cardinals hired Steve Wilkes, and Steve Wilkes, uh, and I gotta plead something here, I had forgotten about this, Steve Wilkes used to be the defensive coordinator at ETSU. Uh, he was the defensive coordinator, excuse me, he was the co-defensive coordinator, and Paul Hamilton in 2002. It's Wilkes! It's Wilkes that we don't have a football program for 12 years at ETSU. Well, come to think of it, there's a lot, there is a uh, argument that can be made that the 2002 football season really killed ETSU football. And I will tell you this because you are going to have a circumstance in which uh, he was, the, the 2002 season, you have to understand, was sort of a make or break year for ETSU football. And I don't think they fully realized it at the time, but five years before, Paul Stanton had come up with sort of a proclamation that we've got to get our financial order football straightened up. We've got to, we're going to look at a five-year, you know, look-see at the program. They didn't play with full scholarships. You get 63 and I think it was then Division One AA, now FCS. They had 59. And so it was like you're on probation every year, big time. And that's one of the reasons why ETSU football struggled. But Paul Hamilton had done reasonably well under the circumstances. He had put uh, three straight six and five seasons together. And now it was 2002. And preseason polls in Division I AA, it was still Division I AA at the time, had ETSU ranked eighth in the country. <coughs> Pardon me. First game out, one of the more embarrassing losses, I think, in the history of East Tennessee State football. They lose 34-0 to NC State, who 15 years, you know, fans went there, big rainstorm. You kind of thought, okay, maybe with this rain that sort of, you know, evens it up a little bit. You can, you know, win one of those... You know, ten seven in the slop games or something like that. I mean, you know, everything's going to be equal. Uh, you know, blah blah blah. It wasn't that way at all. Rain prevented ETSU from doing anything with the passing game. Only completed two passes. Lost thirty four nothing to NC State, a team that they had beaten fifteen years before. And okay, well, nobody really expects them to beat NC State, right? Got worse from there. And I've always said this as well, that was a year that it was between Chip Kessler and Jay Sandoz in terms of broadcasters, and for whatever reason, ETSU, I actually had written an article about it, and I don't have the time to go into it now to kind of explain this, but uh, for, for a variety of reasons, they had replaced a talented broadcaster, Chip Kessler, with a less than talented broadcaster, his name was Chuck Jones, and uh, it, it's worth noting this otherwise forgotten footnote in ETSU history and local sports history because I mean it was just this bad that you wanted to, you know, you want to remember it so it never happens again, and it was just they hired like the most unprofessional, you know, high school type announcer they could possibly get. He had been calling games at Seymour High School and he prefaced everything he said with football fans. And you know, football fans, the down is first and 10. Football fans, the ball is on the 20. Football fans, the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. And it went through this the entire ball game. And it was absolutely, I mean, you can imagine what it was like to listen to it. It was awful. And so... You had this broadcast, less than professional. Then the team started to lose and lose 
and lose. And they finished 4-8. and eight. And it was the worst season that ETSU had had since Don Riley was the coach. More than 10 years. And those two factors, I think, very heavily, the presentation... I often wondered if it wasn't absolutely tried to sabotage. I mean, let's put the worst product we possibly can to kill this. I, I often wonder if there was some sort of, you know, ulterior motive to do that. I mean, the athletic director in 2002 was Todd Stansbury. He's signing off for Chuck Jones to be the play-by-play -play announcer? Really? The man is now voting on who should make the college football playoff. He's the athletic director at Georgia Tech. And, you know, okay, sometimes you say, okay, we make a mistake and all that, and you make an in-season change. They never did this. It's the one thing I could never figure out. The other thing, though, that ETSU did that wasn't real classy is that uh, after Stansbury left, uh, they never told Jones that we don't want you back. They just, and that is really, really, that shows you about the administration that took over. Anyway... The circumstance then came out that I, I think that it was so bad in 2008, or two, not 2008, excuse me, 2002, that football was doomed and was then cut and they played the Swan Song season of 2003. That was the year that Wilkes was the co-defensive coordinator of ETSU. Now he's the Arizona Cardinals head coach. Would someone like to explain that one to me? <laughs> By the way, speaking of uh, high school broadcasts, we have good high school broadcasts. Our next high school broadcast, and by the way, I do want to apologize. Uh, we were not able to broadcast Friday night's game uh, like we had originally planned uh, for Unicoi County Sports. I was just too far under the weather to do it. And we had a commitment for 20 games and just the idea, even though it was promoted, we just decided, look, I cannot get out of bed uh, to do this game. I'm not physically capable of. Our backup announcer was out of town, Riley Morris. And uh, their decision was made at that point, uh, just reschedule the game. I had actually considered going to a friend uh, or a friend or two, seeing if a uh, sportscaster friend of mine could pinch hit or something and do it on a freelance basis, but it didn't work out. But this Friday, be the good Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, as Johnny Cash once sang. Unicoi County, Johnson County basketball, live from the Devil's Den, will be aired here on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities. 6.30 is the tip-off time for the women. 8 o'clock for the men. Or if you prefer, girls and boys, because most of them are under 18. Or if you wish to be politically correct, male and female. I guess the males would be at 8 p.m. and females at 6.30. I think you got that. Here are the sponsors, Health and Home Care, followed by Jones and Church Farms. Great tomatoes. Unicoi County Insurance Agency, Unicoi Gas Utility District, Farm Bureau Insurance. Irwin Paint and Body Shop, the Clinchfield Federal Credit Union, my friends at the Computer Guy in Irwin, right there downtown, check them out, good work, fair price, Relay for Life of Unicoi, Unicoi County, Dr. Jason Cunningham, what does he cure? Cavities. Do you cure cavities? No, you fill them in. He does cure toothaches. He's a dentist. Dr. Jason Cunningham. Irwin Utilities, Irwin Bonding, Unicoi County Memorial Hospital, Urgent Care of Irwin, Irwin Pets, and the Unicoi County's favorite chicken place, the Irwin Kentucky Fried Chicken. And if you tune into the ball game, you can get $25 of free Kentucky Fried Chicken from Irwin KFC. That's this Friday, just listening to Unicoi County basketball against Johnson County on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities. Incidentally, the yesterday the uh, high school basketball polls in the state of Tennessee came out. Again, no area teams in them with the possible, with the one exception of in the uh, Division II rankings, 
Providence is number four, a 13 and one season. They trail, no surprise here, Brentwood Academy, number one, then Edensworth and Good Pasture. University High is number five. Uh, yeah, University High of Jackson. Sorry, not the Junior Bucks. Anyway, do want to remind you that in about 13 minutes, we're going to be talking, I, and I wanted to get to this, Virginia Tech, North Carolina basketball. We're going to go to the fringe areas, if you will, of the Tri-Cities. Would you call Sam's Gap the fringe areas of the Tri-Cities? Would you call Abingdon the fringe area of the tri I think you would. Mark Berman, Roanoke.com. He was at the ball game last night in which Virginia Tech defeated North Carolina. I've got some clips from that and a lot more coming up one way or the other. It's Tri-City Sports Now, and I'm Marky Bilson coming back to you after this.